Well, good morning, family of God. We serve a gracious, loving, caring Father, and i um, so blessed to be and honored to be right here with you as we are going to talk about prayer, the ministry of prayer, and how effective and how much it's needed in our times. Without a prayer team, a lot of times churches will kind of like fall apart. So now we're going to church and we're saying, where's your prayer team? We can use them. If you have a prayer team, it doesn't matter, three, four of them, we're going to go into the community. And we're going to pray for people and we're going to, the church going to the people. And it's a beautiful thing once that begins to happen because the church gets out of its comfort zone and it begins to walk in the same steps that Jesus and his disciples did. I thought of John the Baptist too. Do you know he was never went into the churches? His ministry was out in the, in the wilderness. And, and, and it was so amazing to think of that. So I think one of the great, so this morning, I want you to think of this, have this in your heart and your mind. What if I prayed? Like it was my last day. Because I don't know about tomorrow. And Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow has its own troubles. But worry about today. And I'm going to share some stories about men that I've prayed with, that I've walked with. That are no longer with us. But we pray. I know they accepted Jesus. I could be confident to tell their parents. Yes, let's go and John and read through and to give them confirmation. They said, is my son in heaven? Is my mom and dad in heaven? And so I get to share the scriptures with them. I don't answer them with my own words. I said, let's look in John. And I began to walk with them. And it begins to speak to them. The Lord speaks. I just have words, but the word of God is what changes everything. And one of our greatest gifts that the Lord has bestowed on us is the power of prayer. And prayer, not only the thing is, sometimes I was reading this book when I first got married, and I still read it. I've read it like seven times because it's so much encouraging, some really good nuggets. It's called The Power of a Praying Husband. And what it did is it really transformed my thoughts, my perspective, and even showed me how to walk a prayer out and put my wife's name in it. So it helped me a lot. And one of the things it says, when you start this book, stop praying, change my wife, change my son, change my daughter, change my parents. No, Lord, change me. I need changing. I need a new perspective. I need new understanding. So with that, let me say a quick prayer over us. And, and very to the point because God, this is how Paul, this recorded 650 prayers in the Bible and 450 were answered. So most of them came from Paul and Jesus himself. So this is very amazing. But I pray right now, let's pray. Father, I thank you for your loving, caring, precious people, Lord. I pray for spiritual wisdom and spiritual understanding as we come to you knowing that you are our pastor, the good shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep, Father. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. And may we do that in return for others, Lord. And may we pray like it is our last day because we don't know about tomorrow. But we thank you for today and the daily bread that you provided. We pray this in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So one of the, I come, uh, I didn't want to bring my power drill because it's very loud. I don't want to pierce anybody's ears. So one of the things, my power drill, it's so, it's so great. There is some power. But what happens is, Say, I forgot, one, I was doing a job, I forgot my battery, an extra battery. I was using it so much, the battery died. 
And so I forgot my extra battery. So guess what? I couldn't finish the job. But at the same time, it's like prayer. If you pray a little bit today, you have a little power. If you pray a lot, you have a lot of power through the Holy Spirit. And God wants to do it. Prayer is not about eloquent words or it's straight praying from your heart. It's just being real with God. And most of it comes to repentance. We repent, right? When we come to God, a lot of times, and we've seen that. When a, when a city or a nation has repented, God heals. God, oh, God comes and he fills that land with new hope, with new power, with new understanding. Um, I'm going to go straight into the scriptures in, in the gospel of Luke chapter 11. So prayer changes me. The Lord say, next time say, Lord, change me. Help me. Assist me. Guide me. And prayer is not just asking for wants or requests. It's part of it. But prayer is not just about shooting out words. It's also about hearing. And the Bible says it like this. And it happened while Jesus was praying in a certain place. And after he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray. Just as John taught his disciples how to pray. Jesus said, when you pray, Say, Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. So he could not pray this prayer like for himself. He was guiding us into how to pray, get to the point on things. The matter of the heart and the heart of the matter. And, and I thought of it. When's the last time you voiced, Lord, I want to spend more time in prayer. And I want, when I pray, I want to pray with power. I want to pray with power. I want to see lives transform when I pray. I want to see things happen. I was talking to someone the other day, and he goes, wow, I'm feeling. He has issues with this carpal tunnel here, and he was going, wow, I don't know what it is, but it's feeling really good, and it's feeling really warm. And that's not even, that has nothing to do with me. It's the Lord. But the Lord wants to use us. Well, one of the greatest ways the Lord uses us is through prayer. Do you know that Jesus, the Son of God, was known as a prayer warrior? He's a prayer warrior. You might know some prayer warriors today. You might be a prayer warrior. And I hope you are because he spent most of his time in ministry in prayer. Here's a perfect example of prayer. God's children coming to the Father saying, I trust you. And here's all my concerns and all my worries, Lord. I'm laying it down on you. I never will forget what this missionary said. He said, when you come to Jesus, lay everything down on him. Do not carry anything. You should not be burdened. Lay it all down. Cast it. Come. There's a lot of invitations in the Bible how Jesus guides us how to pray. It says he was praying in a certain place. What does that mean? That Jesus went away a lot to get along with the Father. Because guess what? When we pray, we also ask for guidance and protection. And, and, And God, what's next? What do we do? How do we do it? The Bible instructs us in Matthew 6, To pray in secret first with the Heavenly Father. Close your door behind you. Build that relationship. And then, guess what? The next step, you go public. But it all starts with you and Him. And I thought of it. When you pray, we got to get away. We got to go to a certain place. And, And also, when you pray, I know getting in my car, I'm like, before anything, I said, I'm not moving, Lord. I'm going to sit here. This is my request. The Bible says, do not be anxious. Everything through thanksgiving, prayer, and make your request known to God. So here's my request. I praise you, Lord. I thank you for this day. 
And then I sit and I say, Lord, I can't move this car until you speak to me. So I give three minutes, three minutes of prayer and then three other minutes just sitting there waiting to hear from my father. And our father is longing to hear from his children. Prayer is not, it's also communicating. God wants to communicate to us as well. You know, we ask of him and I say, Lord, what are you asking of me? I'm asking this of you. What are you asking of me? I want to be aware. I want you to reveal your will to me. And a lot of times the will is in God's word. Oh, I don't know my will for my family, my future, my, my employment. Any, anything in your life, it's in the word. We just got to go back. And how many times do you think the disciples turned to each other and said, Hey, John, Peter, where's Jesus? You know, he's praying. Why are we with them? Why are we with them? Why are we, we spending time like him? So when you pray, get away. Part of our prayer, a lot of times our prayer was in a garden. Or in a vehicle. God has spoken to me so many times just by being quiet and sitting in that vehicle before I leave. Yes, buckle up, but wait to hear before we move. Sometimes we might forget to pray. How many are sometimes in a rush and then we say a quick prayer? You know what prayer does? It slows us down. It slows us down and it puts all our attention back on the Creator. Because that's where we need to be. Did you hear the word of the disciples before they brought their prayer request? You know what their prayer request was? Lord, teach us how to pray. Have you ever asked the Lord that? Why didn't they say, Lord, teach us to preach. Teach us to praise. Teach us to practice what we believe. You know what they said? Lord, teach us to pray. Because they knew that was the most effective ministry of all. Without a prayer team, without a, we don't have anything. Because everything is born in through prayer. And our trust not in ourselves, but on God. Isn't it astonishing that the Bible says that they waited? It says one disciple waited until Jesus was done praying. They didn't interrupt the rabbi. They said, we're waiting. It said one of the disciples, most likely it was Peter. Peter was a spokesman. Peter was a guy that you could come to and you say, hey, there was two disciples that were very close to Jesus. John the Beloved and also Peter. And Peter, they were Galileans. So Galileans were very, they were very good um, followers and leaders. And these Galileans, check this out. They said, hey, Peter, can you ask Jesus this for me? What if he said, why don't you go ask him? You're one of his disciples. You're on the team. It's easy, go ask him. But they would tell Peter, and Peter was the one that would ask the heartfelt questions. He wasn't, hey, Lord, how many times do I got to forgive my brother? Seven times. Wait, Peter, I mean 70 times 7 <laughs> times. And that equals 400. Think about it. He was talking about in one day. He was saying that not in your lifetime. One day. It started with 7, but you know what he's meaning? It's endless. Keep forgiving. Clear your heart. Don't have anything else. It's, it blocks us from prayer. When we have things in our heart or grudges or bitterness or hurt and all that and Jesus wants to, hey, come in, come in. How many times, you know the greatest call to his people were? To pray. Pray to Yahweh every day. To pray. That was the call. If my people who were called by my name would humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, what would happen? Yes, healing upon our families, 
healing upon our land, and there would be new, there would be revival. Revival has to do with forgiveness and repentance. And imagine this, Lord, teach us to pray just like John, they're talking about John the Baptist. And one of us, they were observant that John the Baptist trained his disciples to pray fervently. That was very important in that ministry. Prayer was the heart of everything, what they were going to do. And here's my main point, is being faithful to the Lord, F-A-T, which spells out, be faithful to pray without ceasing. And for the A, always do what the Lord called you to do. And for the T, if you have a teachable heart, you have a reachable heart. I have a friend I was, I was working, so there it is. So be faithful, always, in prayer without ceasing. Be available for what God tells you to do. And also be teachable in your heart because you're reachable. God can reach you. See, he had to reach in before I could reach out. He reached in, I reached out <laughs> because of that. Not my power, not my glory, not my praise. All to the glory of the Heavenly Father who called his children into the world that people would be saved, people would be delivered. We're the New Testament church. And I know some of you cannot do that, but guess what? You're doing it through the ministry that you sow into. As you're sowing, you become partners. You become partners of what God is doing, and we're building his kingdom. We're not just building a church, we're building a kingdom. And where did Pastor Gary say? The kingdom starts. In your heart. Prayer starts in your heart with your family at home. Prayer starts there. I had a friend that was working so much, and I I said, Hey, I haven't seen you for a while. I don't even see you at church no more. And he said, Well, um, I've been working a lot on saving up my money. I said, Why is that? He said, Well, the Lord told me to save my money so I could purchase a church building. And I was like, huh, I was thinking about it. And I said, well, did you really pray about that? Or is that something that, and he said, yeah, I prayed about it. And I said, who's going to be the pastor of that church? And he says, I am. And then I said, who's going to do the children's ministry? And he says, well, I'm, I'm working on that. And I said, well, you know what? Sometimes we position ourselves and in my, are you positive that you prayed about this? Guess what happened? It never happened. He never purchased the church. He never bought the building. That, and he didn't become a pastor. Because God has to position us. That's why I told him, did you take it to prayer? And for many of us, we would not be here today. We would not be saved if somebody didn't invest in what? In praying for us. It could have been your great-grandparents, your parents, your, your spouse, your teachers, coaches, best friend, relative, pastors, whoever it was. I want you to thank God for those people because they are so precious that they lay down their life, their time to pray. I would not be here right now. And, and I could say all the names. And, and the truth is, I wonder how many people are counting on your prayers today. Not what you could do for them. You know, so many times, it's not what we could do for the people. You know what they say? Can you just come and pray for us? Yes, of course. That's no problem. We can go. Where are you? I'm at the hospital. I'm at wherever it is. Here we go. And... The truth is, if our church starts in our marriage and our family, as we grow in love and wisdom, it will be no problem to reach out to other families because you're building 
your church at home. Church really starts in the house. I had my friend, we had a big event yesterday. We were here at Santiago Park. And um, anyways, I, I remember the first convert that we prayed for and when we started doing these laundry love. And I don't know if the, does he have a picture? No. Okay, no, go ahead. Another one? Is there another picture? There's nothing else? Okay, it's okay. Well, this man, he was homeless. And I remember going out there by faith. We have never really done this. We've done it in parks and that, but laundry mats. And I remember it was right here on Chapman. Chapman and Maine. And I remember talking to this guy and I was like, Lord, how to, and he said, give him the gospel in one minute. And then just step back and let him make a decision. Don't, you don't have to keep preaching. You don't have to keep telling him. Just give him a moment. The greatest thing about prayer and also preaching and ministering and praying for people is letting them hear and letting them make the decision and not overbearing them with script. Just They already feel the love. They're already open. The Holy Spirit's already working. Well, this man opened. I, I gave him the gospel, and I said, you know, I pray with you. And he said, yeah. I said, have you ever received Christ? He said, no. And I said, so I prayed with him, led him to Christ. And he was homeless. He's not homeless no more. But he was homeless. And we, it was so amazing how God could use us like that. I think of the famous preacher Charles Spurgeon. Was he, he was interviewed by the press and was asked, what's the secret of having a successful ministry that's reaching multitudes of people? He said, well, my people pray for me when I'm preaching. As he was delivering God's message, there was a big prayer gathering under the basement beneath, praying upward while he was preaching. So guess what happened? It connected. It pierced hearts. It made a difference. It makes a difference. Even before I stepped there, Rose is like, there's a, a prayer warrior right there. She goes, you know, I'm praying for you, right? I said, I know. We could feel it every day. We feel that touch of people praying and us building. And I want to share with you a, a story of a grandmother, a father, and a young boy. And he comes and, he, and he, jump, he runs in the room and he jumps on his grandmother's lap. And he says, Grandma, I know you have a good relationship with God, so I was wondering if you would pray that I would get a bike this week because it's my birthday. My birthday's coming up this week. Grandmother's, no problem, son. I, I could pray for that. So the father walks into the dining room, from the dining room into the living room, and says, son, can I talk to you? He says, yeah, sure, sure, dad. So he follows his dad into the dining room, and he says, dad, what's going on? And he says, well... I don't understand why you're speaking so loud to your grandmother. She's only inches away from you. You know, son, God's not deaf, right? I know, Dad, but Grandma is. And the truth is, yes, we got to speak louder, but prayer is not just about speaking. It's about hearing. And I never lose your appetite. Do you know we could change each other's life and the world and your world? in seconds by bringing it to God and saying, you're in full control. You got this. I don't have to worry. The kids in this generation, they play with these, these playing games. They, they want to have control. Or if you have a TV and you have the remote, you're like, I'm in control. I, I, I got this. I, I can And they're like this. And this generation and, and the truth is, prayer is about releasing all control that you think you have. I, you know my prayer to the Lord this morning? I have no control of anything, but I give you full control of everything. I have no control, but I trust that you have a plan and that you're walking with me. 
you're talking to me. You're guiding me. I really believe that. And I love working with teens. You know why? I, I always thought, we always thought of it about uh, going to the high schools and all that. You know one thing I, what I like to hear them, they hear us. They say, you're very, tra- you guys are great. You're very transparent. You guys tell us like it is. And you guys are very shared stories. And they say, you know, Pastor, instead of hearing a sermon, I'd rather see it. <laughs> I'd rather see it in action. And that's the truth. If you're a parent today or a grandparent, they're watching you. They watch how you talk. They watch how you live. They watch how you walk. Guess what? We need to be excellent examples because Christ was a perfect example. And we can follow that. We can follow that. And you might say, I I remember, I'm like, I don't know how to be a father, Lord. I don't know how to be a father. Would you help me? I didn't, I've never been married. I don't know how to be a husband. Would you be? He became the husband. He became the father. He's the leader. I follow him. And guess what? And we don't have to parent alone. We don't have to do marriage alone. Right? God is like, I'm right here. I'm right here. My, I love my grandmother's words. She was in her, she, she passed away at 92, but she was still going to the garden to work in the garden in her 90s. And she would say like this, since, a kid, since I was a kid, I was here. They were always praying in the word and practicing, living out the word. It was, I would watch them, and my grandmother said, she would always tell me, whatever, lo que te dice Dios, hazlo, ahora. And I always, she said, everything God tells you, do it today. Don't wait for tomorrow. God has a big plan for your life. And now she would say, you are special. God has a big plan for you. You don't know. And I was like, okay, Grandma. Okay, Grandma. Not knowing. And then in the future that, you know, I would conduct her funeral. And I would get, let her sh- share the message that she would ask of the family. She only wanted two things. I said, Grandma, what do you want me to say at your funeral? What do you want me to tell the great-grandkids, the grandkids, and all the family? Tell them. She said, I just wanted you to tell them two things. That they would give their lives to the Lord, and they would serve people. And I would say, all right, I could do that, Grandma. No problem. So I did it. And my family, you should have seen. They were weeping, and they were like, they knew it was not me. It was from this is what she wanted. And even saved that she would be able to see me saved, that we got saved. But there was a time that we didn't serve God. We were far from God. But she prayed, she prayed, she prayed, she prayed, she never stopped. Here's another thing. When I met my wife, I know marriage is a school of character. The best or the worst will come out of you. That's what Martin Luther King said. And you might find yourself frustrated, irritated, complaining maybe about your partner, your children, the church, whatever it is. Imagine if we put all that effort into praying about it. Not just talking about it. Let's pray about this. Let's pray. I always say, if you don't pray for your marriage and your family, the enemy's going to pray over them. He's going to keep going and going and going. He's not going to stop. we got to protect them. The power of prayer. God, you're in control. This is not in control. You're in control. I give you all control. When I met my wife, this is something that... we And, and I always tell men of God, win your family over to Christ. Do what you have to pray for them. Be there for them. Invest in them. I know I, I go at my funeral. I know people might forget about me. The church might forget about me. But guess what? My family and my grandparents, all these, they're not going to forget about me. And they're going to be, they're going to be saying stuff about me. And I thought of when I first met my wife, something that really struck my heart is she had this book 
power of a praying wife. And she would go. One day, she sat and she said, I want to ask you, what can I be praying for you this year? So she started marking stuff down. So one of my first ones, you know, one of my first requests, that I would have a relationship with my dad. Because for a lot of years, I was a rebel. I was a prodigal. My parents, my dad had to let me go basically and say, hey, I can't do this no more, son. I know you're in prison. He says, I, got, I need a break. And I understood. And I thought, and I, so my first request was my relationship with my father. And then I said, I want to get my license. I want to get a job. You know? My wife wrote everything down. And I know she was praying into it. Because you know why? Every time I'd come home and she would be like, can I pray for you? Yes, pray for me. And she would pray for me. And guess what? By the end of the year, she said, hey, we're going to start crossing some things out. Because the cross paid for it. And I said, what's that? And then, how's your relation with your dad? Wow, we're going. It's beginning to, it, oh, I don't have a license. Now I have a license. Oh, I didn't have a job. Now I have a job. And so she started marking one. But I thank God for that woman of God. I thank God for her. And I want you to thank God for all those people that are praying. And I know most of you are praying for something. And we need to trust God again and put it in his care. You know, I had a friend I was talking to yesterday, and you know his wife? She committed suicide. She put a gun to her head. And I just let him weep and weep and weep, and I hugged him and I prayed with him. And he says, I, I want to thank you, Pastor, because you made time. And I, I wasn't going to share this, but this is eating me up. And I'm tired. I can't do this. No more. I have so many nightmares and all that. And he says, ever since we talked, he goes, you know what? I haven't had no nightmares. I haven't had this. I, and I was like, praise God. And he got to talk to my son yesterday because my son was at the men's gathering. So it was a beautiful thing. But we just want to praise God. And then David was out there, helped us with worship, he was out here at the park with the men of God, and it was a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to see all these people coming together because of prayer. So let's pray. Oh, it's, are, you, are, you, are you singing a song? Go ahead. Oh, it's, oh, oh, right here, one last one. Here's another, one last story. Right here, there's four of us, right? There's only two of us that are here today. The other two passed away. See the guy in the middle? I'll never forget we were at a laundry love. And we were, this guy was walking by. And my buddy, the big guy, Hector, says, I grew up with them. That's my buddy. And he, and he, was, he was homeless. And he goes, so we got him clothes, change of clothes, and all, we were praying for him. Two weeks later, we were thankful to have that opportunity to pray with him. And I know he accepted Christ. And he's God's son. He died two weeks later. And then a couple months later, Hector overdosed. Hector was a, I would call him, hey, I need this. Hey, can you help me? Hey, I'm over here. This. And he was a prayer warrior. And he od fentanyl. And so, what if we pray for each other and forever, whoever God puts in your path, like it was our last day? We love you so much. And as Pastor Gary says, one of the most loving and caring things you could do is pray for one another. That's what we could do. We could change the world. We could change our family. We could change circumstances. And we don't pray for that. We pray because we're in communion. We want fellowship. We want to spend time with our Father. Because guess what? We're going to spend eternity with them. And guess what we're going to be doing? 
praising, dancing, loving life. No more worries. No more. No more wheelchairs. No more glasses. No more limp. No more aching bones. None of that. We're going to be free people. And we're going to do what God called us to do. But God has an assignment for us right now before we go home. So let's pray. Father, I pray health. I pray restoration over your people. I pray that there would be a deeper, closer relationship as they pray, as they trust you, as they release all things to you. And as they lay it down before you, Father, I pray that you would cover them, keep them far from from evil or things that would bring them harm, Father. Protect them, Lord, and let them, when they hear you, that they obey in any way they could. And I thank you for their ministry to pray. Bless them, Lord. Open new doors and bring their families. Let us be a blessing to all the families on the earth. And we trust you. We release all our cares. And we cast all things on you, Adonai. For you are our king, our maker, our true savior. In Jesus' name, amen.